Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Tonight I'm gonna to be making the second soap in my winter slash Christmas line. And you have seen me make this soap before. This is a remake of one that I did last year, but it was wildly popular, so I decided to go ahead and bring it back this Christmas and this winter season. So it is using the fragrance oil Fresh Snow from Brambleberry. This is an amazing fragrance. I think this is why this one was so popular um, on top of the way that it looks. It looks really nice. Um, the Fresh Snow smells really outdoorsy, almost like a clean linen, but it's got an ozone, like outdoor airy note to it. It's so beautiful. It smells like taking a walk um, on a cold, crisp, snowy day. So beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this one back this year. And I'm so excited, I absolutely love it. We're gonna be using um, some kale and clay um, in this recipe. And we're gonna be using some melt and pour embeds. Um, last year when I designed this soap, I decided when I smelled it, sometimes when I smell fragrance oils, um, inspiration pops into my head and that's how I come up with some of my, most of my soap designs. Basically, I smell the fragrance oil and then all of a sudden I'll start to get pictures in my head about what I think it should look like. So last year what pops into my head was basically a white uh, base, a real crisp white base soap. And then I thought it only needs one accent color and I'm coming up with like a light um, airy uh, blue. So I uh, made these embeds out of melt and pour soap. And this year I actually did dust them with some snowflake sparkle mica because I just thought it needed it. It just, they're so pretty, but last year I did not put dust them at all with the snowflake sparkle mica, but this year this is the one change that I did make to it. Um, so basically we use those embeds to go all through the soap and then when you slice it, it makes a really awesome effect. So all the work of this soap really goes into the prep. So I did that all off camera. Um, and I made those curls using this cheese slicer. So I just poured a little bit of melt and pour soap into this tall and skinny silicone mold. And there's some of my scraps and my curls that didn't turn out. And then I um, curled it, curled, once I, I went like this, I took it out and I um, shaved the soap. I rolled the soap up into a spiral and then pulled it out. And that's how we got the shape here. And you want to do it when your melt and pour is still fresh, like maybe slightly still a little bit warm so it's moldable. If it's too hard, these are going to crack and they're not going to turn out the way you want them. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we are making 10 pounds today. So I'm just pouring my lye and water solution right into my oils. And then I'm going to get this to a, um, as from what I remember, this fragrance, it says it does behave well in cold process soap, but I think I had slight acceleration last year with this. So I'm going ahead and I'm just going to blend this to a light trace. Okay, so for this soap, we're going to be adding in um, some kale and clay. Now, kale and clay is really good for, um, for shaving because it adds a nice slip to your soap bar. And also, it, like with any clay, it is um, detoxifying, so it's good for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my titanium dioxide. We want to make a very white base. I'm going to go ahead and hand stir those things in. And then I'm gonna be adding in my fragrance oil, hand stirring, and then I need to give this a blend to get all the white dispersed in there along with getting the clumps out on that clay. Okay. So there goes my fragrance.
Gosh, it just smells so good. Um, I think last year I sold out of this soap in a matter of a couple days. So I'm happy to be bringing it back. Um, and I know a lot of people, a lot of other soap makers who've tried this fragrance really do love the way it smells. It's really, really nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up and just try to get all those lumps from the clay out. Okay, my olive oil, if you could see, was pretty green. Um, so I am actually gonna put you on pause here and make a little bit more um, titanium dioxide to put in here because I really wanna bring that white up a little bit more. Okay, that is more the color that I'm looking for. I went ahead and added uh, more titanium dioxide dispersed in water. You have to be careful not to use too much water when you're um, dispersing your titanium dioxide because that is how you get glycerin rivers. Sometimes you can get glycerin rivers by just excess water in your titanium dioxide. So um, usually I like to use olive oil pure because um, the, olive oil, the olive oil pure is lighter in color. Um, I did have some other olive oil that I needed to use up that was more green. Um, so that's why sometimes you get a variation in the color of olive oil. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and bring the molds into the frame here. And what I learned by making the soap last year is not to fill the molds up all the way because those embeds do push the soap up a bit and if it gets too full, um, kind of comes out of the mold a little bit. So I just go about a quarter of an inch um, to the top and I'm pouring out a very light medium light trace. You are going to have extra soap here um, in your batch unless you deduct for, um, unless you deduct your recipe or minus the amount of embeds that you make, but I never do. I usually just use the scraps. I usually just use the extra for like soap scraps or samples. Okay, I'm going just going to go up a little bit more on each mold. and then I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with the embeds. Um, another thing that I'm changing a little bit this year from last year is the amount, the amount of embeds I'm adding in. Um, I liked the amount I added in last year, but there um, might have been a little bit too much in some areas. So I'm gonna to try to, I did a little bit less. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to like even it out a little bit more so that we get um, the same amount of embeds throughout and we're not gonna do as many. Okay, this is still super fluid, so I'm gonna give this a minute to set up so my embeds kinda of stick in the soap a little bit better and I'll bring you back when it's set up and ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start placing the embeds in now and it's still fairly loose, but that's good. You don't want it to be too set up because then you can break the little spirals that you worked super hard to make. Um, they are pretty delicate and they're easy to um, break around the edges and stuff if you're not careful. So um, we're just going to take the embeds and we're going to put them in. I'm going to try to kind of randomly place them because um, then you, you get cuts randomly down the bars that show the inside. You'll see when I cut it what I'm saying. It, it just turns out really unique looking. So we're just going to go ahead and start randomly placing the embeds into the soap. And I am gonna be posting this um, recipe onto my Patreon page, along with a detailed tutorial, written tutorial, of how to make these um, beautiful soap curls. Um, It does require a bit of technique that I'm sure with a little practice you can get down. So I'm pushing them down kind of as far as they will go. Um, there we go.
Do you guys ever find it hard to repeat a design that you've done before? Like, you know it turned out good. I guess that's the artist in me that is like, oh, I can't recreate that. I have to make something different this time. Um, but I know how popular this one was. I think that's why I decided to dust it this time with a little of the Snowflake Sparkle Mica, just to kind of give it a little bit of a change from last year, even though it was already really good. That's just the part in me that likes to create and make um, <laughs> something different and new. Okay, we're gonna come over to this soap and then with the leftover embeds, we'll just kind of randomly place in. So this soap is perfectly set up right now to place these embeds in. They're sliding in easily, but it's not so loose that they are uh, falling around inside there. They're staying in very nicely. it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and um, put some uh, Twinkling Lights glitter from Nurture Soap on top. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, yeah, there's my spoon. I'm just using this little um, mesh strainer here. Let me get my thing loaded here. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tap. Lightly. Just kind of dust. You don't even have to tap. Just kind of dust it. There you go. This is a pretty fine glitter, so it comes out of the strainer easily. I hate sifting with my left hand there. The glitter's getting a little concentrated in some spots, so. There we go. I'm just gonna sprinkle on. There we go. Twinkling Lights glitter is really pretty. It almost feels like a powder. It's super fine. Okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my rubbing alcohol. And you know what? I have this other little embed I placed into my sample just to kind of test. So I think I might take it out of there and put it in this soap. Just place it right here. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my 91% rubbing alcohol and I'm gonna spritz this down to kind of seal that glitter in and prevent soda ash on the top. Okay. There you have it, everybody. There's the making of fresh snow, cold process soap. Stay tuned for the cutting. Hi, everybody. I'm back to go ahead and cut the fresh snow soap. And I'm actually a little bit nervous because if you can see right here, apparently the soap got hot last night and it melted um, some of the embeds. I have one curl that is like this on this loaf and another curl that looks like this on the other loaf. And this did not happen to me last time I made this soap. Um, I soaped at room temperature and I left it out uncovered. So that was a little surprising to find. So I'm hoping that when we cut it, um, not they're not all melted on the inside.
because that was not the look I was going for, although it might look kind of cool. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this. I think, yeah, I'm gonna go this way, and, and my hope is to get through, is that my cutter will cut through the embeds. Okay, and it just has the neatest effect. So that's how it looks. There's one bar. It's not so pretty. Okay, so we didn't get um, melted embeds, at least so far. So far, it looks pretty good. Though this is the one that has the melting on the top, so um, it isn't quite as defined, so maybe that one did melt down a little bit on the inside. See how you can see the lines here and you can't really see them on this one. They're just kind of melted in, but it's not terrible. It's kind of cool. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked that video, please remember to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends. Catch you on the next video.